So what I want to do in this quick video is just show you how you can design a logo or a letter using Desmos and setting the regions for which your expressions are defined. And I'm going to do that by designing the letter C. And I'm, just to make things interesting, I'm going to make it sort of like an italicized C. So I'll start with y equals 2x. Now this is a line with a slope of 2. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to restrict the domain of this line to only being between 0 0.5 and 2. The reason is if I don't restrict the domain, this line's gonna continue forever. And once I start you know, adding other lines, you're gonna lose sort of the appeal behind your letter because you're gonna have all these lines all over the place. And that's not really what we want here. So like I said, I'm gonna restrict the domain here. And in Desmos, in order to do that, I open these sort of squiggly brackets. If I just open this keyboard in the bottom here, I can use these less than or equal to signs to specify the x values for which I want this line to be defined. I'm just arbitrarily picking 0 0.5 and two, and I'm cutting it off there so that my line does not continue indefinitely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make like a thick C with, with sort of like two borders to it. You'll kind of see what I mean by that as I develop the sketch. So I'm not gonna use the same domain for the second line. I'm actually gonna cut it off at one. You'll start seeing why as this the sketch starts sort of taking form. But I'm gonna just play around with the X values until I'm happy. Uh, you can see that I've got two parallel lines here. That's sort of gonna make up like the spine of my C. Next, I'll make the top part of the C. I'm going to need a horizontal line, and I'm going to make that horizontal line y equals 4. So you can see that sort of being the top of my C. But I'm not going to want this to continue forever. I want that to sort of start at 2 and end at, I don't know, let's say 5. And I can do that using this expression. My x values only take place between 2 and 5, and this says including 2 and 5. So we'll call that the top of my C. I want to make a similar horizontal line slightly below that line to give this sort of like a thicker look. So I'm going to design a line, I'll say, uh, I don't know, 3.5. Doesn't look like it's the same sort of thickness as my other line. So maybe I'll call it 3.6. That looks to be approximately the same distance here as it is here. But again, I want to cut this line off so that it doesn't continue indefinitely. And this Desmos program is actually telling me that these two lines intersect at 1.8. So I'm going to use 1.8 as my lower end of my boundary, and I'll make this thing go to, I don't know, we'll say 4.8, just see what that looks like. And sure enough, you can see I've created a second border for the top of my C. In order to close this gap here, it should make sense that I need a parallel line to both this red and purple line. So I'll develop a line with a slope of 2, but I want to adjust this line so that it lands approximately here. And I can just play around with a bunch of different y-intercepts until I'm happy. If I choose negative 6, you can see that I happen to just touch those two lines and close that gap. But I don't want this line to go on forever, so I'm going to use this point, 4.8 and 5.4, to restrict where my line happens to exist. 4.8 and 5 I'll use to make that happen. Now if I want to get really picky, this purple line, you can see it kind of intersects this red line. I could really just cut that off at this point, because there's really no need for the purple line to continue. So I'll use 2.3 instead of 2.5 as the upper end on my domain and you can see that cuts it off nicely. The same thing with this red line. I don't really need this red line to start at 1.8. I could have it start at 2.3. So making that change results in this line. Maybe you can see this italicized C sort of starting to take shape. Let's do the bottom segment. Now I know that the two lines that make up the bottom of my C should be parallel to the two lines at the top. And these two lines have a slope of zero. So I'm going to design two lines with a slope of zero, but I'm gonna position them on the Y axis in such a way that I can create the rest of my C. So why don't we start with a line at y equals 1. You can see that's going to be the top portion of the bottom of my C. Uh, but I know that I really only want that to go from 1 to some value here. If I want to be really precise, what I could do is go back to my blue line and just get rid of the restrictions and find the x value that this line would intersect with that green line if I didn't cut it off. And you can see that's 3.5. So what I'll do is I will create a new boundary here with 1 as the lower end of my boundary and 3.5 as the upper end. I can then go back to my blue line and re-restrict my line so that it doesn't intersect with that green line. This gives the C a sort of sense of symmetry. So you can see the C is starting to take shape, but remember I also need the bottom of my C, which is going to be a horizontal line going through some Y value. Up here I know that the distance between these two lines is 0.4. I've got 3.6 and 4, so I've got a distance of 0.4, and I'm going to try to replicate that down here. So in order to do that, I'd have to find 0.4 less than 1 and make that my y value. 0.4 less than 1 is 0.6. So you can see I've got a nice horizontal line here. But remember, my goal is to restrict this so that it doesn't continue indefinitely. What I'll do is go back to this red line and just imagine that I didn't restrict that domain. And I can find the point of intersection here to be 0.3. So that means that I can make 0.3 the lower end on my restriction. 
which would give the impression that these two lines would intersect if that red line continued. I'm not really sure what the x value is going to be on the upper end, so I'm just going to guess and say, I don't know, 3.1 for now. Looks like it's going to be a little bit than that, though. So I'll go back to this red line, and I think I'm actually going to extend this a little bit so that it actually intersects with this purple line. And I can just play with x values until I actually see that point of intersection, which you'll recall is 0.3. So the last thing I have to do is find out what line would go here to close this little gap in my C, allowing me to finish this design. And the answer should be in this blue line where I originally restricted my domain. Remember, if I continue this line forever, I should see a few points of intersection. I definitely have the ones at the top, but I should also have the points of intersection at the bottom with these two parallel lines that I've just created. So I know that blue line would intersect at 3.3 and 3.5. So what I'll do is copy that line. I'll make a new line, but I'll change the restrictions to 3.3 on the lower end and 3.5 on the upper end. In doing that, you'll see that I've created my final line, closing that gap and completing my italicized C. Obviously, this is a pretty simple design, only using my understanding of lines, parallel lines, as well as my understanding of restricting a domain of a line. You can obviously take this a little further by adding more complex functions like sine of x and restricting the domain there. But for the purposes of this video, I just wanted to introduce you to this idea using lines.